Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. We're down here in my craft room where I was able to clear off another shelf on my big metal rack in order to make room for more junk journal supply storage. Now normally this rack was housing kind of two levels of kids craft supplies and my kids are getting a little bit older so they don't really use craft supplies as much anymore like the you know like the little little pipe cleaners and that kind of thing so I was able to kind of clear off a space and make some more room for um, some of the bigger items that I was kind of storing away that I really wanted to get out in front and have this kind of inspiration in my craft room so I rearranged a bunch of things and I know I did a couple of videos earlier about um, junk journal supply storage. I had two of them. One was on tools and nothing has changed on that. But then the one on the ephemera and other fun things that kind of changed a little bit. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let me go ahead and just pan out so you can kind of see the kind of the whole shelf. Um, I have my scrapbooking supplies here on this middle shelf. And then down below is uh, junk journal supplies. And then if you move over to this other side, I have um, another two shelves of junk journal supplies. So just I'll give a quick overview on this side. I didn't really change much from the previous video other than I did kind of make a little bit more room um, using these iris containers. I had, let me show you this. Um, oh, let me show you this shelf too. This is a repurposed um, shoe rack. It's a double level shoe rack and these are really nice. I like to kind of have risers on these metal shelves because it gives you more room to store things. Um, otherwise you just kind of have everything laying flat and you kind of can't see what you have. So it's really nice to kind of try to um, kind of raise things up a little bit. And I'll show you on the other shelf, um, another uh, monitor stand that I use to kind of do the same thing. So, so you've seen these drawers before. I just have ephemera and um, vintage supplies in here. Um, playing cards. I'm kind of <laughs> accumulating quite a few playing cards. So I, I added, a, used a bigger drawer for those. Um, I keep all my large word die cuts in this drawer here. And I've talked about that also in a previous video. And then... Uh, these iris drawers are really nice. They're, they slide in and out really easily. And I just have some ephemera packs in here that are kind of more vintage style. So the kind of florals, vintage florals and that kind of thing. And then I have this um, Anna Griffin. These are flower rub-ons. Actually, I'll show you these because these are really pretty. I just recently got these. Um, from the Anna Griffin website and I thought these would be great for um, journals, decorating pages. So let me pull one out here real quick. So these are really pretty um, and they're just like the traditional rub-ons where you um, cut out the the flower and then you you rub it on with kind of a like a bone folder or something like that onto paper and it transfers onto the paper and it looks really pretty so I got a big pack of those and I just kind of keep them in here because it kind of goes along with the kind of floral ephemera theme so put that in there. and then this drawer set I've shown you before I really like the library card catalog type look and um on the big in the big drawer down here um, I've got some wrapping paper scraps like some of the bigger scraps that don't fit in smaller drawers so I just put them down here and then over in these drawers are just um, some Maggie Holmes ephemera right up here and then this is all of my Tim Holtz ephemera in these drawers and I think I've shown all this stuff before but just to give you a quick overview this is more Tim Holtz flowers I have my vintage recipe card uh, boxes the metal boxes that I have I keep my vintage recipe cards in and then over on this shelf I've just added another box of 
greeting cards because I'm starting to accumulate quite a few. I love to find these at antique thrift shops. Um, they're just so pretty and uh, I love all the embossing on it. And these are some that I found recently. And little invitations. I think I showed these on another video when I went to a thrift store. These, these little invitations, these are really cute. So I kind of keep the boxes of cards that I find at thrift shops in one box and I keep other vintage cards that say I get on Etsy and that kind of thing in another box just to kind of keep them separate. Um, just so I can kind of keep track of what I've found and where I've gotten things um, before. So, and then this is my ephemera case, which I've showed in my previous video where I just have all of my ephemera kind of organized in these little iris cases. Nothing has changed with that. Um, and then this is kind of something that's changed. I was looking for a place to put vintage wallpaper and other like larger pieces of vintage wrapping paper, like full sheets. And I had it originally sitting on top of these iris cases, which are my scrapbook scraps, scrapbook paper scraps, and then um, ongoing projects for uh, journals that I'm making, and then Christmas supplies down here for journals. But I was able to free up an iris case and I ended up putting it, um, putting it on the shelf and inside I put my full sheets of vintage wrapping paper along with some other types of specialty papers. This was a bunch of sheets of cheese paper. So it's really thin um, kind of vellum vellum sheets that would re re be really pretty for, for junk journals, but I wanted to have them in a safe, secure container, and so I thought this would be a good place to put it rather than just sitting out. And these are just some pieces of felt that I use to make cluster embellishments and then also as journal pages. And then this is a big stack of vintage wallpaper that I got on Etsy that I now have in this container that will just keep everything flat and keep it from getting dusty and that kind of thing. So, so I was glad I could make room with, for that because on this shelf I used to have, this is my vintage milk carton, <laughs> on this shelf I used to have my vintage advertising cookbooks and I'll show you where I put those in a minute but let me just pan out and kind of show you again where everything is. So that's that second shelf. And then down below here, I have, um, like I showed you before, the, the scrap boxes and the project containers. I have my October afternoon ephemera. So this is from all the collections from October afternoon that I have. And if you don't subscribe to Peachy Cheap, definitely do if you like October afternoon, because I've been finding, I think twice now, I have gotten some October afternoon um, ephemera packs on there. They'll have like some paper, the little die cuts, and then stickers, and they'll have like a whole collection pack available um, on their website. But as you know, PG Cheap, you have to kind of get it that same day, and then it goes away. But um, if you just sign up for the emails, they will um, they'll send you the updates every day on what what they have on their website. And um, I've recently got some Woodland Park. These are really cute. Um, a bunch of ephemera from them on the Peachy Cheap, Peachy Cheap website. And they had Woodland Park, which is a super old um, October afternoon collection. It ha came with um, these little cards, and then they had um, some paper along with some ephemera. I think some like pearl, pearl dots, too, that were really pretty. So, so um, if you like October afternoon, that's definitely something to... Um, just subscribe to Peachy Cheap and hopefully I'm hoping they come out with some more um, coming up maybe in the fall or the winter so we'll see but anyway so this I keep it in this container here just on top of these drawers these are more of um, the iris drawers that I picked up this has more specialty paper in it so this is just kind of this is a vintage bag here I have some Tim Holtz um, wallpaper 
and some Anna Griffin um, that, uh, velvet paper along with some of these uh, Tim Holtz. This is like some vellum that is nice to use for journaling pages too. And then I have some washi sheets way down here at the bottom. I had organized my washi recently and um, I'm just going to show you just a little bit. These are just some full sheets of washi that you can cut down. So I have those at the bottom there. And then over in this drawer, I have all of my coasters, coasters and some doilies. Um, these are coasters that I got from the dollar store back, I think it was the springtime they had, had these um, really pretty colors of coasters. So I picked a few of those up. And then these are some vintage coasters that I got on Etsy. I got this pack and then this one is my favorite. I love these flowers. And then a couple other packs. And then some of my, I have my big doily sheets down there too. Um, so anything, anything that's kind of doily and coaster related I have in the store. It's, actually, it's my doily overflow because I have a separate drawer for doilies. Um, but I'm always on the lookout for vintage coasters, because the, the paper coasters. Those are really, really fun. And um, I have these here in this box that I had shown on a thrift store haul. These party um, at, they're like ashtray coasters, which are they're really fun. They have all different dogs on the front of them and they come in this really pretty box. So I have these on top of here. This was my candy box that I got recently on a trip to an antique store. And then these are some more, these are my, actually, these might be my favorite coasters. I just, I picked these up on Etsy and they're wraparound coasters and they're cool. They have, um, kind of playing card designs on them and these scallops and it's to wrap around your drink but I use them I have a um one of my journals that I made I think it's I don't know if it's my travel journal I can't remember or actually no I made it for um I think I made it for my son um it's got this coaster in it as like a page like a signature page so it's kind of fun you can it's, it has like a velvety feel and you can flip it around use it as a little page so so these I've got a lot of these and the box I love the box too that's always fun so I have that stored in this container here just sitting on top so I kind of tried to when I rearranged I kind of tried to leave room to grow because I really I, I've really been enjoying taking trips to antique stores I'm trying to go once a month because that's when they kind of refill things I think and just to kind of find new, some new and new things and I get so much in from inspiration when I go there um, just with what's available um, and I'll show you in a minute some things that I never even thought of that I picked up that were just just some really great finds so so anyway, that, that's this shelf here. Um, oh, and one other thing I have, this is one of those dollar store uh, containers, the floral containers. This is just a whole bunch of extra vintage and um, kind of modern papers that I use for junk journals. So just these pads of uh, pastel colored papers, um, lined paper. Uh, this is... Oh, this is just like a learning pad that's got the, the lines on it here. And then some ledger, a ledger pad. This isn't vintage, but um, it kind of looks vintage, so it's fun to, to put in journals. And then um, down at the end there, that's just my scrapbooking <laughs> pictures that I keep organized. So when I do scrapbook, I can just pull some pictures out there. So that's this shelf here. So let's go over to this my new shelf that I created, but let me show you what I have up above here. Um, I kind of a rearranged it a little bit. Let me pan back again. You can kind of see up at the top, I have my scrapbooking reference books and then some drawers with some old paint in it and that kind of thing. And then on this middle shelf, I have a whole uh, shelf of catalogs, catalogs and magazines. So I have um, some Montgomery Ward. I like the 1960s um, kind of era, Montgomery Ward, JCPenney. And then I've been picking up some of these um, 
old House Beautiful magazines, um, Electronics World. I really like the science magazines too. Those have a lot of interesting pictures and a lot of interesting um, ads in them too. Um, Reader's Digest. These are some old Reader's Digest I actually got from eBay, I believe. This is from 1968. And again, these I just have like stories, but then I really like the, the ads that are inside because they're, they're kind of older ads and there's really some fun pictures and everything. So, um, and then just more, more magazines and that kind of thing here. These are all of my books that I have, like the older books. These are some Reader's Digest books that I will, um, be repurposing the covers for to make journals. And then these are some more magazines that I picked up recently at some antique stores. Um, again, I just love the pictures on the front. I just think these are so interesting. So I got those. And then I added this basket. This is what Rite Aid find. It was like a, from the dollar spot in Rite Aid. Um, I have, because it was such a cute basket, I thought it would, would look really cute with my knitting magazines in them. So I have, these are all my like old timey knitting magazines. And actually I think I have one kind of, this is like a garden catalog, kitchen magazine in there too, but it just fit nicely. So I've got all of these in here so I can kind of pick and choose through those. And again, they have really nice ads in them. And then here are just some more books here, some more vintage books. And then these are some covers that I've made that I'm gonna be working on journals pretty soon. This is gonna be a more masculine journal. I haven't really thought about what I'm gonna put in it yet. Um, this one I'm really excited about. This is all ready to go. I think this is gonna be kind of like a tea and, um, tea and book type journal. So I'm gonna get that put together. And these are just some more journal covers that I can make journals from, probably ring journals with those, and some extra, some extra journals that I would like to repurpose too. And then let's go to my new shelf, and I'm gonna show you my favorite thing on here that actually doesn't have anything in it. I just got this off of um, Amazon, and it's this really cool retro set of drawers. And I thought it fit perfectly on top of this, I just got this uh, monitor stand that's kind of raising everything up. And as I mentioned before, the reason I wanted to add some more space is because I have found these uh, cards. These are recipe cards, like from those monthly clubs that you could belong to back in the, I think these are from the 60s, but you get like a recipe of the month club or a group of cards every month. And this was a full set I found at the antique mall. And it's got all kinds of very interesting casserole recipes and things like that in it. So I wanted to have this out because I like just kind of being inspired by it. And I had, didn't have anywhere to fit it until now. So I think it fits nicely up on this shelf. Back here, let me pull this down. This is my greenhouse, uh, month, greenhouse plant of the month club. So again, it's like kind of the, the whole card idea but you get um, monthly cards about gardening and plants, house plants and outdoor plants. And it comes in this really cute greenhouse shaped box. <laughs> so I just love having that out, it's a lot of fun. And then I think I showed this on Instagram. This is my McCall's cookbook collection and it came with its own McCall's holder in it. So I have that up on here too. It's got just like those old like interesting casserole recipes again, you know, the, the fruit arranged in interesting ways. I love the illustrations that are in here. They're very kind of old fashioned and then the nice color photos of meat and that kind of thing. So, so these are, these are fun. So it's nice to have these out too when I'm feeling inspired. And then this is just, this is a set of three drawers. Um, it just is, again, gonna leave me a little bit of room to grow if I find some smaller ephemera items. But I just thought the, the de design was so pretty on the front. And then I just fit um, under here, just another kind of dollar store container that I haven't put anything in yet. And then this I moved from the previous shelf 
that I showed you, the middle shelf there. This is my uh, box of cookbook, uh, advertising cookbooks. And it's actually getting quite heavy <laughs> because I've, I've again been collecting more of these. So these are those kind of cookbooks like Jello and um, different, you know, ways to use rice, ways to use tapioca pudding, that kind of thing. So I just, I love these so much. I love all the colors. I love the bright green. I think that's really pretty. So lots of fun. Sometimes I'll just sit, uh, you know, if I'm just, if I kind of, if I get like where I, I just can't, I don't that feeling so creative. I'll sometimes just sit at my table and just open a few of these and flip through them. And you just get, it's just fun to just sit with a cup of coffee and just go through and kind of uh, try and wonder what it was like to, you know, cook back then and, and the types of recipes. It's just fun to, fun to go through and it kind of makes me smile. So it's, I like to, um, to look through those. Um, and then over here, I picked up some more of these iris stores, which are really nice. They're not, I mean, they're very um, utilitarian. They don't have a lot of like interesting vintage charm, but they really do um, keep everything protected and they slide in and out so easily. So I really like them. So I try to have a little bit of kind of a vintage look, but then also have some things that are useful, some useful storage items. So this is a drawer that I needed some place to keep. I recently, um, I have made a Kitty Witty Paper Craft has a new uh, class out online where she shows you how to make a journal using uh, cattle, or using uh, dress pattern uh, envelopes. And it's a really great class. Um, I definitely recommend it. And so I knew that the antique mall that I normally go to has a lot of these. And so I um, went back and I picked up a few and I got some interesting ones. I really like this one because it's kind of um, it, the girls are kind of at an angle, which I thought would be interesting for a cover. So I'm excited to, to make another one of these. So these fit really nicely in the drawer so I can just keep those from getting dusty and, and torn and, and that kind of thing. And then this drawer here, I'm keeping all of my, um, uh, bingo and game cards that are kind of loose. So I've kind of accumulated quite a few bingo style cards. I have some flash cards. I have these that I showed recently on a video and this game is called Whist and it's like a very old card game. It looks like it was really fun and it has these little, little pencils attached to the scorecards. Um, this was a really fun find. So I was excited to get these. Um, so I'm keeping those in here too. In this bottom drawer, I have um, some more vintage milk cartons. And then I also have, I had moved these from where I was keeping my washi tape, um, these vintage decals. These are really fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use those for, for um, journal pages too. And even the, uh, this is the, kind of the backing of one of the, the decals. It has this really uh, fun, kind of retro style picture on it. So I was saving that page too to use. And then I have some labels that I found at the antique store as well. And these I'll probably use for something. And then this was my uh, file folder that I keep loose book pages in, which I showed that in a previous video, but I just moved that down here. It fits really nicely in this um, little space here. And then up here are just some more, I've been kind of collecting a few uh, games, vintage games, bingo and bridge. And then I showed this before too. This is the I'm out um, flashcard or the bingo game. And um, it's got a lot of really nice cards in it too. So, so that's everything. So that's kind of a little update. Um, as probably most of you do, it, you kind of, you're always evolving in your craft room. And so I feel like I've I'm kind of settling in a little bit better with my organization since junk journaling is kind of newer for me. Um, I wanted to make sure I could see everything I had and make the most of my space. So, so that's everything. Let me know if you have any questions and I will continue to have more videos on um, kind of my junk journal adventures and the ones that I create. 
and um, let me know if you have any video requests. I would um, love to show if you're interested in anything, you know, learning about any way I organize things in my craft room. I, I put out quite a few videos and I actually created a playlist, but then if there's anything else you can think of that you'd like me to show, I can definitely um, add that as a video. Um, I'm always open to suggestions. So I appreciate you all and thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in my next video.